In a previous video, I spent some time talking about the fact that we as collectors may need to make a mental shift to think of ourselves as business owners. And part of the reason why I made this recommendation is because of the recent law that has been enacted that requires PayPal and other third-party platforms to report income greater than $600. The truth of the matter is that any income that you make even prior to this law being put into place, was technically reportable and thus taxable. But that's neither here nor there, right? I am not going to rehash some of the things that were discussed in that previous video. I will, however, invite you to check it out if you happen to miss it. But what I want to do in this video is to talk about some of the things that you can do. If you are making that mental shift, if you are shifting from being a collector to thinking more like a business owner that you can actually do to offset some of that income that you are going to have to report. And I am specifically talking about things like deductions. Deductions are one of the most powerful tools, if you will, that we have at our disposal. And so in this video, I'm going to spend some time talking about some common and not so common deductions that you can potentially take to offset any income that you report. Now, I am not a CPA, not in any way, shape or form. So I do want to encourage you to have a conversation with your tax preparer, your CPA or, or whatever type of professional you want to, to make sure that you can take some of these deductions because there are some rules and regulations around some of this stuff. With that said, let's go ahead and get to the list. The very first thing that I want to talk about is software and miscellaneous. If we are going to think of ourselves as a business and if we have legitimate business expenses like software, then those things should be tax deductible. And when I think about software, the thing that readily comes to mind for me is if you are paying to get access to a pricing guide like Go Collect or Cover Price or ComicsPriceGuide.com or GPA Analysis, those are legitimate business expenses that should be tax deductible. When it comes to some of the miscellaneous things, the things that readily come to mind for me are CGC or CBCS membership fees and also fees for getting comics cleaned, pressed, and graded. In addition to that, if you have collectible insurance on your collection, that too might be considered a legitimate business expense and could be something that can be deducted from your taxes. Another major source of deductions are travel expenses. And what I mean by this is if your business again is the buying and selling of comic books, then if you are traveling for that purpose outside of your normal geographic area and you are gone for longer than a day to something like a con, then potentially the expenses that you incur for that trip could be tax deductible because after all, you are probably going to that con to get signatures, to get books graded, to buy books for the purpose of resale later on. That might be a legitimate business expense. And so to that end, if you are getting on a plane or driving in a car or using taxis, or if you're having to get lodging or tickets, then those things could be tax deductible. In addition to that, some of the meals that you actually uh, consume while traveling could be considered legitimate business expenses as well. And so that is just one example. If you happen to be traveling out of town to buy a collection or to look at a collection, then potentially those expenses are also tax deductible. The third thing that I want to highlight is inventory. And I am literally surrounded by inventory here in my collection. And there are books that will be in my collection long term. There are others that may not be here all that long. But my point is it all represents inventory books that potentially will be sold at some point. Inventory for a business is also tax deductible. If you happen to buy collections, those collections that you purchase are considered inventory and therefore might be tax deductible. The fourth thing that I want to talk about is a big one. This is a deduction that I have been taking for a very long time because I've almost always had a small business and it's tied to your physical space that is dedicated to your business. 
For example, if you have a house or an apartment that is a thousand square feet and 500 of those square feet is dedicated to your business, to storing your inventory, filming videos, pick packing and shipping comics out to customers, then that would mean that 50% of your expenses tied to that physical location are potentially tax deductible. And I have to use the word potentially because there's rules and regulations around all of this stuff. But for example, your utilities, 50% of it potentially could be tax deductible because 50% of your space is dedicated to your business. If you have other expenses that are tied to that physical location, like water, power, telephone, internet access, those things too are also tax deductible. And again, you have to have a dedicated space where that space is solely for the purpose of that business that you are running. And this comic book room is pretty much dedicated space because not much else happens in this room other than me filming videos, pick packing and shipping things, and also for storage. In addition to this, I also have garage space down below and there is a dedicated bay that houses the 100K collection. Both of these spaces technically will be tax deductible and I'm going to have to take some measurements to determine the actual square footage versus the actual square footage of the overall house, which will give me a percent, a percent that I can then take on the expenses tied to the overall property. So again, this is something that I've been using for years and years. I encourage you to have the conversation with your CPA to determine what actually works for you. The fifth and final thing that I want to talk about is office supplies. And this is definitely not a sexy topic, but there's no way that you can be in comics and not incur some expenses for the hobby in the form of office supplies. And when I think about office supplies, I think about things like bags and boards and bins to store your comics in, painter's tape, box cutters, bubble wrap, labels, boxes. These are some of the things that readily come to mind that are expenses tied to the hobby that again, potentially are legitimate business expenses. And potentially if you pick up a Swolger supply box, that is probably not tax deductible. Skip that one, but I think that you get my point. So over the course of this video, what I've attempted to do is to bring to the surface a few deductions that you can potentially leverage to offset any income that you have to report on your taxes. There are other deductions out there that you can potentially take, but you need to do a little research. You need to have a conversation with a tax professional to determine what actually will make sense and will work for your situation. With that said, I'm going to wrap this video up. I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch. I hope that you enjoyed it. And like I said, if you missed the first video where I talked about the IRS, I would definitely encourage you to check that video out because there's a lot of helpful information in that one as well. As always, if you need to reach out to me, feel free to do so on Instagram at Reggie Collects. Take care.